goalkeeper Damien Hayat, Landell Ritchie is the captain, Johnny Tibbet, Ricardo Thomas, Fabian McCarthy, Kevon Isaac, Tevin Shaw, Marvin Morgan, Peter Vessel, Fabian Reed, Siobhan Marsh. That makes up the Jamaica starting 11. Would it be nice for you to give the numbers so that the fans who are not familiar with any of these players, especially since none of them apparently come from the MLS or La Liga or England or otherwise, but I'm sure those following in Jamaica will also recognize 423, 18, 3, 6, 8, 14, 12, 5, 16, and 17. And those are the starting squad numbers if you're into the lottery and stuff like that. 19, 10, 6, 15, 18, 21, 8, 4, 23, 20, and 7 for Barbados. Interesting numbers. There are people who like them. Dignitaries meeting the squads uh, introduced by first the match commissioner, Gregory Thompson, and the man bringing up the rear is a very proud Barbados Football Association president, Randy Harris, who's also the president of the Caribbean Football Union. Spending a little extra time giving his son Jomo <laughs> a little last minute instruction there, you can't let daddy down. I, I don't want you to be losing against Jamaica. I, I'm sure that's what he said. Um, or you know you can be written out of the will or something of that nature, knowing Randy, because I, I work with him in two different capacities. Uh, yes, very light mood here. Uh, was looking to see if any of the people who were attending the hockey festival made their way over now that the match aspect of their evening is finished and of course Aki Saltfish versus <laughs> Flying Fish and Cuckoo always a savory mix interesting to note Martin and you see the player is still going through the shit hand tell us about that famous research you did hard working uh, schoolboy well um, this is fixture number 15 between Barbados and Jamaica. Stand by as they're about to start the national anthem of Jamaica. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the national anthem of Jamaica. Jamaica land we love, made famous by Usain Bolt, of course. You yet to see the prowess of the Jamaica reggae boys making it as high as Usain Bolt did. Now Barbados.
Anmar, you yeah. can tell who was cadet, who was in the BDF sports program, who had military training, heels together, thumbs down the seams of the side of the pants. Oh my goodness, it, it brought goosebumps to me. Still love that national anthem. It's internationally famous. And of course, more recently at the CAC Games, you would have had Barbadians doing the honors of setting a new four by 100 meter national men's record, 38.41 seconds. Gold medal performance beating Jamaica. So what could happen tonight? Could Barbados beat Jamaica? Definitely they can. It's the 15th meeting between the two teams. Um, Jamaica would have won on 10 occasions. Barbados two, if the game drawing only on one occasion. The last time Barbados would have played Jamaica was being back in 2014. We suffered a 2-0 loss at the National Stadium. But one year prior to that, we would have played the same Jamaica and we won 1-0. Goal compliments for Vera Williams. Um, I can see Raheem Sargent. He's the only player from Barbados that would have played last time in the starting 11. Uh, Jason Boxer would have also featured in that team. And some former great national players, Gregory Goodridge and Kent Hall would have also played the last time we played Jamaica. Well, you've played your part, Anmar, spectacularly. For the viewers and the listeners to the Trident Time broadcast, they're going to get two former Barbados players who are part of our broadcast team as you go and put on your other hat, Anmar. Thank you very much for your introductory remarks and your excellence in homework and statistics. I'll let you pass your mic to the head statistician on the Trident 10, no less than Trevor Gary Lineker Thorne, who's now going to adjust the microphone to his liking. And Trevor, I'm going to vacate the vicinity and stretch my legs and assist some other aspects of the broadcast as well and leave you in the capable company of your former national coach. I, I don't know if you had the pleasure, like I did, to actually get a knock with him. He would talk about it forever and ever. He dummied the ball to me and I fluffed my lines. The one and only Keith Griffith. Good evening to you, Keith. And may you enjoy tonight's commentary here on Trident 10. Blessings, Mr. Paris. Blessings to the world. Nice to be here. Not on the field of play, playing or coaching, but bringing live commentary along with Trevor Torn and Mr. Paris as Barbados engage the reggae boys out of Jamaica. Amazingly, though, Jamaica have come here with a practical under 23 team. When they played last year in the Gold Cup, 18 of those players, Trev, were playing in the MLS. But not one single player tonight is here from that contingent. I see 19-year-olds, 20-year-olds, 21-year-olds. So Barbados must feel pretty confident playing at home. But it's Trevor to get you rolling as the whistle has now gone to start this international. So we're off and running here at the Barbados Football Association's artificial grass surface. The Jamaicans, the visitors in possession at right back. And just seconds on the clock here as they look to build uh, in a slow, methodical way and get this game really rolling here. Uh, the two teams very much in need of the, these, these types of games to fill out the squads that they have. And Jamaica, we know, can call on lots of international players playing all across the world. Uh, but for tonight's matchup and for the game that they played on Friday night, against Grenada when they won five goals to one. They decided to go with the locally based squad and Barbados is now in possession with Ed May. Strong tackle from Sergeant there as the Jamaicans try to get going Keith. But the first real salvo coming from Barbados looking to take possession of it on the left hand side. That is Holligan going down the right. He's been Barsed off of it by Ricardo Thomas, and then Thomas clears with his left foot into the middle of the midfield. The searching ball played. First touch from Tariq Highland, and Jamaica then take possession. That's the leading ball with the right foot volley down the left. 
couple of challenges coming in. This time from the Barbados left back in Akeen Hill. Over the touchline it goes. And with just about a minute going on the clock, Keith, Jamaica now trying to uh, get their footing into the game. Barbados having a number of touches down the right, but no joy for none of the two teams at this point in time. Well, positive start by either side. Jamaica on the attack, so we go back to Trevor. So ball played to the right. That's Sargent. And as Ahmed Mohammed tweaks his team just a bit, Keith, he's going with two brand new wing backs. Uh, Raheem Sargent playing at right back and Akeen Hill at left. Both uh, BDF sports program players in the Premier League. And they're both very experienced as well. Uh, Sergeant, the more experienced of the two, having played for the national team a lot more times than Hill. But Hill will know his way around that back line and he can also be used in an attacking role as well, uh, as uh, Asquith Howell does with the BDF. But here's uh, the Jamaicans on the run, the strong tackle coming in from Harris. Ball breaks over to the left back position as the Jamaicans now start to get the ball rolling with the likes of Kevonte. Isaacs all across the middle of the back line there. He's been deployed as a holding midfielder, but he will come forward and look to pick the ball up from the defence. Ball into Isaacs again. We're in the number eight this evening. Dreadlocks are the order of the day as he plays that ball in towards Marsh. Marsh all the way back to Ladale Ritchie, the captain. And he goes to the right-hand side. Jamaica with six touches on the ball and 60% possession. The leading ball down the right-hand side. Foot race between two. Uh, Tariq Highland will see it all the way out as he does a little bit of a hot scotch there because he's onto the cement side of the surface there, Keith. And he, don't, he wouldn't want to slip there and embarrass himself at all. Two minutes or so are gone. Still tied nil-nil here at the BFA artificial grass service between Jamaica in the green and Barbados, the home team, in the yellow. Well, a positive start. The Jamaicans looking very composed and confident with possession. Barbados hustling and chasing in the early minutes of this game. And one will recognize that the Jamaicans seem well structured in midfield and at the back. They've had the majority of the possession so far. The Barbadian team playing at home should be very comfortable and confident playing here. And like I said, once they can settle and get the rhythm going, they should be able to put up a very important performance here because the result, Trevor, as you know, in the modern game is very important. Barbados has played three games this year, one against Bermuda and one against Belize at home. And they just came from Belize, but Barbados have not scored initially and no game so far. You said that the Jamaicans have just defeated Grenada by five goals to one. Yes, yeah, so the... You would suspect then that uh, if you're sitting on the fence and looking for a, a slight edge, it must go towards the visitors coming off of that massive 5-1 victory uh, in Grenada only Friday night with just about a similar squad that you see playing here this evening. So they will have a bit of confidence. The, I wouldn't say they'd be cock a hoot yet because they're still experimenting with this uh, mostly local, locally based players coming out of Jamaica's Premier League, their professional league that is. But you can see straight away the chemistry is starting to look good for them as they spread the ball down the left-hand side. Nice little one and two touch football. The ball robbed. Overcomes Miller. Short ball played in towards Thomas. Thomas goes in on a run down the left. He plays the leading ball. Sliding tackle coming in from the Barbadian central defender in Ramar Miller. He cuts that one out with the right foot, Keith. And the Jamaicans with a corner kick. The very first corner kick of the evening on four minutes. The Jamaicans positive and confident as they pursue the opening corner, but they look very, very composed in the midfield. They play the ball around with authority and conviction. Barbados at the moment trying to get their shape going short corner from the Jamaicans. So ball played short, cut back on the, onto the left foot. A little assistance needed, square ball and a good cover challenge coming in from the Barbados right back. Raheem Sargent on this occasion stuck the right boot out and the ball was played onto his right boot by Ricardo Thomas and over the, in fact, that was Marsh trying to square and Sargent equal to the task. Second corner on the trot for the Jamaicans as we say goodnight to the Jamaica posse all across uh, the diaspora, especially in Jamaica. Little one-two, sliding tackle coming in again this time. Sets the striker free, Vassell scored against Grenada on Friday, a brace of goals, I believe it was. 
And that's a, a, a bit of a late challenge as well. Overcomes referee Sherwin Moore out of Guyana. And he's going to have a quick word in the, in the ear of the Jamaican there because he, he was just a bit late. That would have been Devon Shaw, I believe it was. And uh, the Guyanese referee doing a sensible thing, having a quick word in his ear. After all, it's, it's only a friendly international and therefore no cards this early, Keith, as he tries to keep this game under control. Positive calling, made sure that he got his word out immediately, keep it nice and cool, no malicious tackles from behind or anything like that. But surely so far, we've had a good uh, movement by the Jamaicans. Barbados trying to find the feet, so to speak, even though Barbados are the home team and Barbados going far down the attacking side of midfield. So leading ball there, Keith, by double H, Aiden Holligan, but uh, used a bit too much beef and the ball went over the touchline. Throwing taken quickly, this time to Morgan, who cuts back to Shaw. Shaw over this time to McCarthy, all the way back to the central defence, and he picks up his captain, Ladell Ritchie. Ritchie changes direction, comes to the right-hand side, and the Jamaicans already seven touches on the ball, looking to play the leading ball into the danger zone. I believe Sargent will usher this one over the touchline, but not before he's challenged uh, with uh, a nifty little challenge there. Six and a half minutes gone, Keith, and uh, still tied nil-nil between home-based home team Barbados and the Jamaica Reggae Boys. Well, for sure, it seems that Barbados are sitting back at the moment, trying to feel the Jamaicans out. The Jamaicans, on the other hand, very positive going forward. They've had the majority of the possession, and they seem very relaxed and confident. They're playing like if they've played here before, Trev. Well, for sure. I mean, having played the their Premier League all season long, and, and as you said, they are a professional unit. They've been able to get their Premier League their Premier League up and running and running professionally at that. Players are contracted to play the game of football in Jamaica, and therefore you would expect a good quality team, even although it is a, a locally based one, will give the Barbarian a chance. Ball into the box here, the clearance made, but not before referee... Sherwin Moore puts his whistle to his mouth. The body check was a bit too much, a bit too robust on this occasion. And the Jamaicans giving up the free kick as Kishmar Primus takes hold of it. And with just about seven minutes gone, they're still tied nil-nil at the BFA artificial grass service between Barbados and Jamaica. Nil-nil the scoreline at the moment. Barbados will need to get the authority and stamp the authority in the midfield if they're going to make an impact in this game. It's early moments of the game, but Jamaica have seen a lot of the ball. Barbados going down the left positively, and we wait for the cross to come in. Cross comes in, and there's a good clearance from the Jamaican captain, Ladell Ritchie, on this occasion. And he was under a bit of pressure, you must say so, from Zico Edme looking to bear down on goal and get his forward on the resulting quarter uh, before... Richie could get there, but Richie was stood, he stood strongest and was able to parry that one off the forehead over the crossbar. This Hayden Holligan, the Barbados number 10, he's, he wants something done very quickly. Looks like it's something, something to do with a near post set play. Yes, he will float it towards the near post. A good punch from goalkeeper Damien Hyatt. The cushion header. And the ball over the top by Morgan, giving away possession. Here comes Holligan down the left. He's one-on-one. -on -one. He looks to Rather than dribble, he looks to cut pass. But bleeding ball played down the left. He asking a lot of Holligan. He's going to need a piece of magic to get out of this corner. He falls on the surface. Referee Moore says everything is A-OK. -okay and gives the throw in then, I believe, to the Jamaicans. Well, I must say that the crowd has really built up nicely, Trevor. The middle stand quite full. And on the two flanks, those stands are also filling up. So the fans are out in numbers. The national team will need to really perform to a very high level despite they're up against what we can consider mostly the Jamaicans' uh, local talent. Under 23 players here, a number of them, 18 years, 19 years old. But Barbados forced to defend at the moment. But the quality of the game so far, not bad. And I must say good night, especially to all of those former nationals and coaches in the chat room in New York and Canada, and to my good friends in USVI President Fredericks and company, 
I know they are watching the game, Trev, and we are anticipating the game and that goals will come as we continue as Jamaica look to defend Barbados probing and searching down the left. Yes, as there's Jules stepping into the frame and winning that ball. The little triangle completed. This is Mario Williams, the Paradise FC ace midfielder. And he's able to link up passes with Sargent back to Harris, who spreads it wide to the left. The leading ball played. There's Jules on his bike down the left. He'll look to create some problems here. He squares, but the cover challenge is good. And the Jamaicans coming out of their defense. This time around, it's Reed with the leading ball down the right. Overcomes Ramar Miller and plays it all the way back to the BDF defense program goalkeeper in Kishmar Primus. Ball charged down by Siobhan Marsh. As Sergeant tried to make his way out of defense. He'll need to defend here strong again. He does so. Here comes Williams. He'll clear his lines now. Ball coming off this time of Peter Vassell. The Jet that got a brace of goals against Grenada on Friday night. And he puts that one into touch for a Barbados throw on 11 minutes. Well, Barbados will need to slow down the game a little bit. They're trying to go very quickly when they're in possession. And they're not playing with a lot of cohesion at the moment. So whereas Jamaica looks positive and confident and assured, Barbados a little too much hassle. And now they're in trouble here with defense. Danger here momentarily, Trev as Barbados have to defend deep inside their own half. So the square attempted, and the clearance made, that was uh, Fabian McCarthy on the far right wing, number five. Tried to put that one across the box to test Kishmar Primus, but the defensive tactics was good enough and smart enough to put the ball over the touchline for a Jamaica throw. 12 minutes gone in this one, and we're still tied here between Jamaica and Barbados. Well, uh, you will notice that Jamaica are concentrating on the short corner and they come in with a good shot again, good save by Primus. But Barbados would have to really reorganize and readjust at the back, especially when they're under the cosh from corner kicks because the Jamaicans are using that tactically to start the, the corner with two players close to the ball. That's, it. That's Ed May with his second touch of the ball, tries to get it across to... Uh, Harris on this occasion, but the pass was wayward. Jamaica coming out of their defense now. Over to the left. That's Thomas back inside. Middle of the midfield. Out comes goalkeeper Damien Hayat. He distributes to the right. And coming over is Tevin Shaw. Shaw in the middle of his midfield. Will play the 10-yard pass. As Jamaica just cool it, cool it down. Four touches on the ball, very confident and composed in the defense so far after 13 minutes. Haven't had any real problems as such. And here comes the captain, he's soldiering forward. This Richie plays the leading ball, overcomes the Barbadian central defender in Ramar Miller. And he puts this one into touch and looks for some defense to keep these Jamaicans off the Barbadians. 13 minutes gone, Keith, and uh, still no real joy for any of the two teams. Square ball into the box, uh, just outside the box, actually. Clearance made by Barbados there. Chested down. Jamaica in possession again. Marsh inside to Vassell, who's dropped really deep here to knock it around. Cuts past two. Plays the leading ball to the inside left channel. Leading ball played again. Jamaica uh, just about in here. We'll need some smartness from Tariq Highland to keep the map bay. Left foot square. Clearance made. Good stuff from both teams. And the headed clearance again from Miller. Sets Tariq Highland free. Who finds who finds Zico Edme. He plays the little hat over the player's head. And then plays the leading ball down the left. But uh, a bit too much on it on this occasion, Keith. Rashad Jules ran out of space there. And the Jamaicans taking control on 14 minutes. Yeah, Barbados will need to adjust a little bit, get players together a little closer, keep possession of the ball, make the Jamaicans work a little harder to regain possession because at the moment, Barbados not offering any offensive threat, whereas the Jamaicans probing and searching look dangerous again on the right side. Yeah, they're 
more look like the team that are playing the tiki taka stuff, Keith, there, which means they're getting a little bit more comfortable than the Beijing Tridents. And they haven't been, I, I, wouldn't, I would say they, they haven't been together that long as a, as a squad as, you've, you, as you would have known. Playing the, when they do play internationals, you could, con, you could see a completely different 16 or 18 men. Uh, but to say that, uh, you know, they've been together for such a short period of time, the chemistry does look to, uh, as though they, they have it together a bit, a bit more than the Barbarians at this time based on possession as it ticks now to 55% to the Jamaicans and 45% to the Barbarians. Well, Barbarians would have to continue to play strongly at the back. They would have to, like I said earlier, maintain possession of the ball a little longer or they will definitely come under the cosh. And the band over on the far side, resplendent as ever. Is that the band from the BDF? It, it certainly looks like the same band, uh, but we'll see as they, they pop those tunes off, if, it, if it's matching or if it's a completely uh, different band. But it certainly looks like the BDF one here, Keith. And you know the Barbados squad does have a number of BDF men playing with it. So the band will probably follow the players as the Jamaicans go one-on-one, -on -one. in fact, not one-on-one, two-on-two -on -two there just now, but the good cover challenge. Here's Tariq Highland playing centrally, cuts it to the left-hand side, brings Harris into play, over to the further left. Hill, all the way back to his defence again, as Barbados now look to get a couple of touches. This is Hill again, we're in 21. Into the defence again, Tariq Highland, over to Williams, who slips and slides, but then regains his composure to play the 50-yard pass. Controlled with the right boot. This is Jamaica coming forward into the middle of the midfield. Tevin Shaw, he leaves it this time for Marsh. Marsh back to Shaw. Shaw surveys, plays a delightful ball, trying to get the outside midfielder of Ricardo Thomas in towards the 18 yard box. But there's Raheem Sargent playing in a brand new position for the national team, but reading the game very well at that position, Keith, and knocking it out. Right foot shot coming in, there's Primus unsighted but able to parry it away with two hands and then collect it on the second time of asking. He distributes now to Harris, son of the president, comes charging forward, tries to play the leading ball, cut out at the back. Hill in possession, all the way back to Primus again, 17 minutes on the clock. Barbados now enjoying the, the most possession that they've had all evening long, that's five six touches on the ball down the right hand side ball cut out at the back leaves it for sergeant in towards aiden holligan plays the short ball and the tackle sliding tackle coming in from a genie talbot on this occasion referee moore brought into action and the ball two-thirds up the field the tackle uh, not sure if that was necessary though keith because he wasn't really going anywhere fast but he gives up the free kick but it's not really making a massive amount of use of it because what they've done is just use the possession to find Jules, who distributes on the far side the headed attacking attempt from Zico Edme harmlessly over the touchline on 18 minutes. Barbados nil, Jamaica nil. Well, that was a lot better from Barbados a moment ago. They maintained possession for quite some time. What they're lacking at the moment, though, is someone from the midfield tries to play that leading ball and be the catalyst and show that they can dominate the midfield. The Jamaicans, every time they go forward, like now, they look very, very dangerous. They've only taken one shot, and here we go again. Not a good combination, but in the end, the ball running into touch. But that is what I meant about the difference between the two teams. Barbados must be able, once they reach the offensive third, to create that opening to give them an opportunity to test the Jamaican keeper. Well, that's for, that's for sure. That was uh, Ricardo Thomas and Siobhan Marsh combining very well with that little one to Marsh, the, in fact, Marsh, the recipient, recipient of the first pass, he directed it to Thomas. Thomas then tried to get on to the end of it, but then he ran out of real estate at the very end. There's a chance here for Edmir to just lob that one up for a post, though, Keith, but it connected onto the wrong side of the left boot, the inside rather than the outside, and Jamaica breathing a sigh of relief there because... If he was on his P's and Q's there, Keith, that could certainly have been 1-0 to the Barbadians. Well, what happened when the ball came to him, I think he was a bit surprised. And despite he tried to guide the ball across the keeper, he guided the ball away from the keeper and the goal. And in the end, no danger whatsoever. So with 19 and a half minutes gone, even Stevens, the Jamaicans with more possession, Barbados working strongly to get 
they're footing the ball in the midfield, but it's Jamaica going forward again down the right side. So there's Aiden Holligan living up to his name. He's hustling and harrying the Jamaicans off the ball in the final third. And therefore, they were comfortable within the first 15 minutes, though, Keith. But Barbados ploy now seems to be pushed a little bit higher and stop the Jamaicans from knocking it around and getting those passes to connect and building the confidence level in which they're doing right now. Here we go again. Ball down the left and it's rubbed. Uh, this is Jules. Plays the into ball into Ed May. And Ed May still sleeping at the wheel again there, Keith. He needs to make good use of those passes because they, they're coming fast and furious. But uh, any good striker should be able to twist and turn uh, 180 and pop that shot off and allow for Hayat to do some work in the Jamaican goal. Well, that is true. Barbados need to test Hayat to see what he has in him. So far, Barbados not been able to take any shots on target. Jamaica would have just one. And the game is just about even. Jamaica more possession. Barbados pressing a little higher up the field and causing a few problems. But we wait to see who will open the scoring. Remember, Barbados have not scored for the year. And definitely before they begin their games in a, the Nations Cup in a few weeks' time, they will need to get on the score sheet. Well, they certainly will. They have possession now. This is Jules, normally deployed as an uh, attacking wide man on the left. He switched side so that he can curl the ball with his right foot from, from his with his left foot from this angle. Ball down the right. This is Sergeant. Sliding tackle coming in this time from Ricardo Thomas in a defensive spot. Two players down on the surface. Sergeant rises first, but Thomas is in uh, a bit of pain and will require some medical attention, which he's just about to get now, though, Keith, with 21 and a half minutes gone here at the BFA Artificial Grass Surface. Uh, it's nil-nil between Jamaica and Barbados. Well, definitely, Trev, evenly contested game so far. And let us look also at the reason why Jamaica here, Barbados preparing to play against Guyana and El Salvador next month in the Nations Cup, which will involve teams out of CFU and CONCACAF, and Barbados need to make an impression and an impact tonight if they're going to go forward positively because Cuba will be coming up in a few days. Two matches against Cuba on the 26th and the 28th. Trevor will confirm that. So this is a very important game. And for Jamaica, they're, I'm feeling very confident to be able to come here without 18 of their best top professionals. They must be very confident, Trev. And their program is going extremely well. Well, you must say so, Keith, because as you said, um, if you can pick a, a, a genuine 20 and have them tour the region, the region as this ball comes across the 18-yard box, there's Danger Man Vassell, sliding tackle from Tariq Highland. Vassell regains his composure, second sliding tackle. Vassell still in possession, manages to toe poke it forward in towards the 18-yard box. The shot coming in, this time from Marsh, charged down by the defence. And on 23 minutes, they're still tied nil-nil with Jamaica. I believe, um, I'm not sure of it, did they get their third corner? No, they didn't. The ball adjudged to have been, um, there'd been an infringement just before that one. And therefore, Jamaica with two corners so far, Keith. Barbados yet to really put any pressure on the Jamaicans. And well, I uh, must say that, that he, he left uh, Tariq Island for dead there very easily. And the Barbados defenders will need to be more calm and composed. When you are in that situation, all you need to do is Relax your thinking, read the game a little better before you dive in, because to dive in here on the um, turf, you're going to look very, very poor if the timing of the tackle is incorrect. Yeah, Barbados going with the William of Wales, the defending league champions, double crown champions, that would be in the Barbados Premier League. That would be Ramar Miller and Tariq Highland, the two central defenders from Wales, starting this evening. And uh, they go with left back Akeen Hill, right back Raheem Sargent. Two holding midfielders in Jomo Harris and Mario Williams. Out left, Richard Jules. Out right, Armando Sugar Lashley. And up front, Hayden Holligan. And um, in fact, just behind, just behind Zeke of Edme Hayden Holligan. And Edme playing the lone front man in a 4 2 3 1 for the Ahmed Bahamid led Bajan Tridents. This is a free kick. This one will be taken by Danger Man Vassell. Brace of goals against Grenada. He's looking quite interested in this one from 30 yards. Shoots with his right foot. A little bit of a slip there. Clearance made. Second bite at the cherry. 
And then the ball up into the night sky here at Wildy. All the way back to Captain Richie. He then clears his lanes. And Barbara's giving up possession. Jamaica taking that possession, spreading it down the left-hand side. Foot race between two. Highland sliding tackle. And it's a good one as well. He catches the ball. And Marvin Morgan, double aim, goes over in a heap. And Barbados win possession of that one. The crowd goes wild on the far side, Keith, because that tackle was solid. And more importantly, was well-timed as well at this level. Well, that is so true. Highland redeeming himself moments ago, coming in with a sliding tackle. He's all of six foot six and very slim and energetic. <laughs> but he would have to be careful because one or two of these Jamaican players are very, very skillful. And unless he times his tackles correctly, he can find himself in danger. At the moment, Jamaica nil, Barbados nil, 25 and a half minutes gone. So the little tickle pass played inside. This is Williams. Plays it forward looking for Holligan. He's challenged and he loses his possession and then commits the foul on uh, Marvin Morgan. Second uh, consecutive foul on Morgan. That's one of the skillful men you were speaking about, Keith. He, along with the likes of Peter Vassell, and of course, the roving two on the left hand side. We'll get back to that in a second. There's the good take by Kishmar Primus. Uh, pinpointing a couple of plays. Ricardo Thomas looking excellent on the left. He combining with Siobhan Marsh, bringing 16 plays for Cavalier SC in the uh, Jamaica Premier League. Thomas, a Waterhouse FC man. The two of those combining very well and giving Raheem Sargent and Mary Williams lots of work down Barbados' is right. But even Stevens, after 27 minutes here at the BFA Artificial Grass Service, Barbados nil, Jamaica nil. Well, Barbados still yet to take a shot at the Jamaican goal. And one would hope that as the game continues, they would find a way to probe, search, and at least test the keeper. They're going far down the left drive with Holligan. So Holligan X is over it. He's looking to take out his defender. The right foot square coming in, cleared by the Jamaican defence into Sargent who controls, surveys the field and then plays a delightful ball towards the edge of the 18-yard box. Charged down by the defence, the right foot shot from Harris. Coming off the defender last, clearance made. Here's Jules, the little body check, wins the ball, just short of the technical area. Takes the throw in himself, into the middle of the midfield, evaded by Vassell and Harris. And then play down this right-hand side. This is Williams, the Paradise Ace midfielder. Would have won the best midfielder in the tournament, Keith, this year. Can play with left and right foot. Barbados is missing a central attacking midfielder in Akil Apowit. This particular, in this particular match, Keith, so we're not getting the pulling of the string as we would normally call it in the midfield. We're knocking it here and knocking it there. And perhaps it is Mario Williams that's going to have this that task this evening. As you know for sure, Joe Moharis will probably play a more holding of the two, the more defensive of the two. But we would want Williams to really show his skill this evening. Down the left goes Lashley for a rare touch. We haven't had his name on the tip of our tongues at all this evening, Keith. And Lashley still hasn't barely gotten into this one. He's playing a wide left position in the 4-2-3-1, but still not able to get onto the ball as yet, Keith. Well, we do need a catalyst in the midfield, one of uh, majestic skills here over Daisy Clark, Adrian Hall, Colin Potato Ford, Yaya Callender, Eric Allen, to name a few from the past, Norman Ford. But at the moment, Barbados are just playing a leading ball and hoping Barbados will need to hold on to the ball a little bit, make the Jamaicans work defensively a little harder, and hopefully they will get Ed May or Sugar Lashley on the end of one and test the keeper from Jamaica. At the moment, though, Barbados working hard, but lacking quality from the midfield. So good passing is the hallmark of a good player. So we would want the Barbados to just cool, cool it a little bit, step up the, the ante as far as uh, the passes go. Maybe five and 10 yard passes is what should it, we should be deploying at this point in time. Uh, nothing wrong with taking a leaf of what the Jamaica are doing. They're they the ones in the ascendancy as far as the possession goes. They make it just about 55 45 uh, in the favor of the Jamaicans in the green this evening. Uh, and they're getting joy because of the same five and 10 yard passes 
from defence into attack. It's a chance for Edme now. He breaks it cleanly, cuts past one. He'll need some assistance here. Strong cover challenge coming in. Referee Moore says no problems. And the leading ball played down the right. But uh, Morgan won't reach that today, tomorrow, or even next week. A bit too much space and power on it. Barbados with the throwing on 30 minutes. Well, yes, Barbados coming for no more positive runs here. But what they're lacking, Trevor, again, is in the final third. It is okay to knock the ball wrong with confidence at the back. But if you're going to score a goal, you need to create that opening as the Jamaicans are looking to do now. Barbados forced to defend again. And the game is wide open at the moment with 30 minutes gone. Yeah, both teams uh, knocking it here and knocking it there. Still no end product as yet. Jules, captain of Barbados, back to Williams. Williams forced to go all the way back to Primus, who will play it short to Sargent under some pressure. Plays the little one, the one two with his central defender, Romar Miller. And Sargent now makes his way down the field, leading ball play, looking for Jules to get in on it. Good body check. Right foot cross, far post, no takers. On the far side, Harris keeps it alive, finds Amanda Sugar Lashley, left foot square. Gets the luck of the bounce. Jules. Oh, the, yes, the chance here. Finished. Barbados are ahead. Oh, brilliant stuff. Jules. Went left. Cut back on the right foot. Used it to pull drive on 31 minutes. Barbados are ahead. The Belgian Traders have taken the lead over the much favored Jamaicans. It's Barbados 1, Jamaica 0. Well, a very, very good goal. Jules got a free ball on the right attacking side and for the first time in the attacking third, Barbados were able to put pressure on the Jamaican defence and in the end, a deflection, the goalkeeper always in problems there, Trev, from the deflection and Barbados have taken a very deserved lead because over the last 10 minutes, the Jamaicans seem to have lost their composure and were not really as dominant as they seemed to be in the opening minutes. But like they said just now, the game is wide, wide open. And a special good night to my friends in Trinidad, the Galindos. I know you're watching the game. Blessings and good night. Barbados lead on the night by one goal to nil. So doing the unexpected there, Keith, using not his, uh, not his much favoured left foot, but this time applying the muscle memory to the right foot this time and getting a slight deflection. The ball made its way over the head of Damien. Hyatt rooted to the spot on the six-yard line. And the Bajans, the Bajan Tridents flying high, are ahead on 34 minutes at this point in time. Barbados won, Jamaica nil. Well, at least Barbados have scored a goal in 2018 and will be hoping to score more goals. The Jamaicans have lost the composure, if you notice, Trev. They're lacking quality in the midfield at the moment. And they don't seem to have that majestic quality where they started off with. So Barbados with a good lead, 32 minutes gone. They will need to impose the well as the game continues. And it is Jamaica going forward, deep inside their own half and under pressure. So 35 minutes on the clock as we make a slight correction there to the, the digital boards here on the computers. Uh, it is 35, Keith, uh, not 33 at this point in time. Two minutes off on that occasion. But here we go with Jamaica looking to get the equaliser. The ball played across the box. It's a chance for the turn of the shoot. He shoots, but he's dragged it wide, Fabian Reed. That was a glorious opportunity for the equaliser. Seemed to be uh, at sixes and nines with himself. He wasn't quite sure where the goal was, Keith. And as he spun 180 and deployed the left foot volley, he dragged it wide of the mark. Well, Barbados were really under pressure there. And the Jamaicans have probably their best chance of the night. But they could not finish it off. And Barbados must continue to push forward, especially when they come into the attacking third, get the ball out to head in Holligan and Jules. And if they can do that, then they can give the Jamaicans lots of problems. Oh, that's for sure. So the Jamaicans haven't having had the 55% possession, Keith. The sliding tackle coming in from Jules overcomes referee Moore. He'll have a bit of a chat as well to Jules. Sensibly keeping the cards in the pocket for this friendly international. And you do find, though, Keith, that once referees are willing to speak to players and get things settled down with a bit of a warning, and the first card normally coming out after 30, 35 minutes, then the game will normally run its course without any red cards being issued. 
uh, which is the ploy which we're seeing from Sherwin Moore out of Guyana. So hopefully that would uh, that would that would maintain here as the tackles will come strongly because both teams playing for bragging rights in the CONCACAF region. Square ball in, chance here at far post, a good defensive header. And then a clearance made this time by Amanda Sugar Lashley with the head. Jamaicans put it right back into the danger zone. Tariq Highland with the clearance. Over to the left. And then the clearance is made. A nice crowd in Keith this evening to see Barbados take the lead here on just about 33 or so minutes. The goal scorer, Rashad Jules. I believe that's his third goal for the Beijing Tridents. He would have got a brace of goals um, earlier in this season as he played a couple of uh, friendly internationals as well. And he's been hit with an elbow or something on the side of the head. He's getting some medical attention at this point. But with just about 38 minutes on the clock, Keith Barbados with the 1-0 lead over Jamaica. And the flag flying very high over on the far side. Has been a reasonably competitive game. Lots of movement from the Jamaicans in the opening 15 minutes. But as the game progressed and Barbados got more organized, they have been able to come back into the game and get the all elusive goal. And it would mean that the Jamaicans will need Trev to come out now and hopefully try to get a goal before halftime, which would also give Barbados an opportunity to create a halftime scoreline of 2 0. As we can see, the Jamaican shirts over on the far side, the Bajan flags flying. Barbados leading on the night, if you're now joining us, by one goal to nil. And we wait for the game to be restarted momentarily. So Jules uh, spends just about six months in Antigua, playing for Antigua Old Road in their uh, semi-pro league when uh, Barbados are out of season. And um, he then comes back and joins, rejoins the BDS Sports Programme for the Barbadian season, which, as you know, in the past would have run from January right down to possibly the end of June. But with the season and the BFA looking to make the change uh, into what we consider the rainy season, I'm not sure how that will, uh, how that will f for, find favour in those players that used to go over to Antigua to play in their semi-pro league. In fact, they'll be actually playing in Barbados' league at that point in time. Uh, may not be able to make it to Antigua for their league. But we'll see how it pans out as we try to line up the Barbadian season with the international one, uh, which has already started in August. Barbados then will be off to uh, a bright start again in a couple of months' time as well. This, the clearance made. And in a foot race there would it be Talbot. Talbot then with the 10-yard pass as Jamaica now compose themselves again, Keith, having been rattled by the Rashad Jules finish. On just about 33 minutes, here's Jamaica turning all the pressure and the heat down the Barbados left. Holds it up, looks to prod it forward. Here's Lashley playing out of his defence and the sliding tackle coming in from the Jamaicans. Barbados winning the throw then on just about 40 minutes. But Trevor, I've noticed that Barbados have dropped very deep since they have scored the goal encouraging the Jamaicans to come forward. But they have to be very careful because the Jamaicans are pretty skillful as they're doing now down the right. Barbados need to turn and throw, oh my goodness. <laughs> that was surely out of the top drawer. The crowd enjoyed that. But Jamaica still trail on the night by one goal to nil. You will call that in Bajan parlance, left for dead. He turned him inside out. He seemed to be far away in Sergeant's Village while the game here is played at the Wildy Turf. Yeah, that's for sure. The skill level of the Jamaicans is very evident here this evening. Barbara is taking quite some time to settle, but they seem to be finding their feet just about now. This is Harris. Changes the point of attack to the right-hand side. Sergeant in possession. He looking to show a clean pair of heels, but Jamaica much too smart for that. And completing their triangle now, coming out of their defence. Here comes Vassell, the leading ball played, and running into an offside position. Fabian Reed of Arnett Gardens in the Jamaica Premier League. And uh, a bit too impatient there, Keith, as that ball was played through by his strike partner, Vassell Reed, running into an offside position. Well, that is true. Barbados stepped up momentarily, which was really good, and ran the Jamaicans offside. 
But as we come into the closing stages of the first half, Barbados will need to be a little tighter and a little stronger defensively because Jamaica, just as they started, are beginning to gain possession of the ball in some dangerous positions, Trev. And Barbados defense will have to hold tight and maintain focus as they go inside the last five minutes of the first half. Uh, yes, for sure. The Jules, I believe he's just about 26 years old, Keith. So, as you said before, comparing the two squads, the Jamaicans would have would possibly have the, the younger of the two squads. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that that would be an advantage. But what it does say is that uh, putting together this, this particular unit and have it tour uh, across the region, they will always be able to find good replacements uh, well, when, the, when any of the international players uh, come to the party. No one to play it. Here's Jamaica in the middle of the midfield. Looks to dribble. The crowd gets to its feet. And down the left, this is Lashley into Holligan. Edge of the 18-yard box. Square ball. Two! Barbados! Zico and the listen to that crowd. 43 minutes in. Barbados with the two-goal cushion over Jamaica. Well, evidently, this Jamaica team, despite they look good on the ball, I've been noticing, Trev, they are very disorganized at the back. And when Barbados broke on the left with Lashley, he played a perfect ball across the box. And in the end, a sublime finish. Barbados lead on the night by two goals to nil. So Ed May would have played for the senior men's national team. I believe this is his seventh start for the senior men's national team. And he has four goals for the Beijing Tridents. As you see, he does the 180 and spins towards the crowd. Jamaica mean business. They'll need to get back into it. And they shell shot here at the BFA artificial grass surface, Keith. 43 and a half minutes on the clock. The leading ball played. Barbados in possession again to Rick Highland. Across the left. Leading ball by Jamaica to Rick Highland in pursuit. Clears his lines. And the ball over the touchline for a Jamaica throw. Well, I'm certain that this game has a lot more goals because before the second goal, Trev, you remember I said that with the way Jamaica are playing, Barbados would have an opportunity to get a second goal if they press early because despite the Jamaicans look good in possession, defensively, they are very suspect and they tend to dilly-dally a lot in the ball in the middle of the midfield and they've paid the price. Barbados lead on the night, two goals to nil. So finally, we have goals for the Beijing Tridents. They've really been, haven't been firing on all cylinders in the last couple of friendly internationals. And that must have been a concern for Ahmed Mohammed. He said he had a lot of work to do in the forward line. He seemed to have done it. Square ball into the box. Clearance made. Barbados back in numbers as they look to come out of their defense now into Holligan, who hats his man. Sombrero. It's called, but uh, fighting back is Shaw, who won't allow that at international level, and wins that one and prods the ball over the touchline. The player is down on the far side. It's uh, Jamaican. One of the Jamaican players is off the field, yeah. along with the Beijing player right off the field. Thomas it is. And the, med the medic is running very, very quickly to see what danger has occurred. But the game has gone Barbados way in the last 20 minutes. Jamaica probing and searching in the opening minutes, didn't get a goal. Barbados settled down, a bit better organized at the back. And after that opening goal, it was quite evident that once you tackle the Jamaicans early and put them under pressure, they will make mistakes. And in the end, they paid the price. And Barbados with a comfortable tuning lead as we head towards the end of the first half. So, thank goodness he's okay. Uh, the Jamaican number six, Ricardo Thomas, would have put that ball <coughs> across the 18-yard box and then slid right into, into the fence and injured himself in the process. But appears to be A-OK. -okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your 45 minutes on the clock. Not a minute more. Up goes the crowd on the far side. 
Yours truly, Trevor Thorne from Commentator Sports Incorporated, alongside the maestro himself, Keith Grail Griffith. Half time here in the friendly international between Barbados and Jamaica. It's Barbados 2, Jamaica 0. Come out and watch the Jamaican reggae girls strike hard as they enter the final round of the 2018 CONCACAF Caribbean Women's Championship Qualifiers. The reggae girls will open their campaign against the Antiguans on August 25 at 6 p.m. before facing Bermuda on August 27 at 7 p.m. The girls will then take on Trinidad on August 31 at 7 p.m. before ending against Cuba on September 2 at 6 p.m. For more information, visit our JFF Live digital platforms. The girls need your support on the road to France. Let's make the home advantage Vantage count. It's time for the Jamaican senior reggae boys to make their debut in CONCACAF's newest tournament, the Nations League. The boys will face the Cayman Islands at the office, the National Stadium in Kingston, Jamaica, on Sunday, September 9. Kickoff time, 7 p.m. Save the date because you won't want to miss it. For more information, visit our JFF Live digital pages. Come out to support our reggae boys as they officially begin their journey to Qatar 2022. See the sun rise up, everything's okay. It's a beautiful day. Feeling so good, I'm glad I'm hydrated. For a day, the water away. One, 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 one buckle, two buckle, three buckle, four. What everybody needs, so I gotta make sure. When I work all day, or I'm with the family, I'm doing what's right for me. I see the sun rise up, everything's okay. It's a beautiful day. Feeling so good, I'm glad I'm hydrated. For a day, the water away. Come out and watch the Jamaican reggae girls strike hard as they enter the final round of the 2018 CONCACAF Caribbean Women's Championship Qualifiers. The reggae girls will open their campaign against the Antiguans on August 25 at 6 p.m. before facing Bermuda on August 27 at 7 p.m. The girls will then take on Trinidad on August 31 at 7 p.m. before ending against Cuba on September 2 at 6 p.m. For more information, visit our JFF Live digital platforms. The girls need your support on the road to France. Let's make the home advantage Vantage count.
It's time for the Jamaican Senior Reggae Boys to make their debut in CONCACAF's newest tournament, the Nations League. The boys will face the Cayman Islands at the office, the National Stadium in Kingston, Jamaica, on Sunday, September 9. Kickoff time, 7 p.m. Save the date because you won't want to miss it. For more information, visit our JFF Live digital pages. Come out to support our reggae boys as they officially begin their journey to Qatar 2022. See the sunrise up, everything's okay. It's a beautiful day. Feeling so good, I'm glad I'm hydrated. For a day, the water away. One, 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 one buckle, two buckle, three buckle, four. What everybody needs, so I gotta make sure. When I work all day, or I'm with the family, I'm doing what's right for me. I see the sunrise up, everything's okay. It's a beautiful day. Feeling so good, I'm glad I'm hydrated. For a day, the water away. Whereas the referee blows the whistle to start the second half. And yes, Ravi, you have to reset your clock and hit that start button. There you go. So I hear Keith making his way up the stairs as well. Hopefully on this night, football will be the winner. I didn't notice, Trevor, any substitutions they seem to have been using the same players. However, you know how it is. It's a friendly international. There are some coaches who either make wholesale changes or they make them frequently. Definitely so, Martin, as we welcome back the viewers to trade intense coverage of the Robert's Follow Association's friendly international between host country Barbados and the Jamaica Reggae Boys. Ball down the right-hand side for Jamaica. Highland with the clearance. A restart, that's a reset for Jamaica. Into the middle of the midfield. As Captain Richie then spreads it wide. The square ball into the box. Clearance made and then the leading ball play with the outside of the right boot by Sugar Lashley. Jules is still with us. Lashley going down the left. He's taunting and teasing. But the ball will be ushered into touch. Um, just about two minutes gone in the second half. Barbados with the 2-0 lead over Jamaica. Keith, I want to know what secret information you went and found out at halftime that could account for Barbados scoring two goals in comparison to the last time they played here on this AstroTurf facility and they ended up in, in goalless scenarios? Well, one of the reasons Barbados have been able to score two goals is because they started positively defensively and then as the game went on, they were able to stamp their authority. Here we go. It's a penalty. Definitely a penalty. And I've been saying that to you, Trev, that Highland and the other defenders will need to keep their composure. And Barbados, with inside the first two minutes of the second half, have conceded an unnecessary penalty. No signal at the moment, but Barbados under the cosh. And in the end, I believe it will put him down. But surely now, Jamaica with an opportunity to pull a goal back. But to what you asked me, Mr. Martin Paris, it was because Barbados organized themselves in the opening minutes and then when they went midway through the game, the Jamaicans seem to have lost their composure and Barbados got two. But we wait to see what would happen. Travel take them through the penalty despite we have no signal. This is Jamaica to step up. We wait. Well saved. And this is not a night for Barbados. No signal, but we hope to be back with you shortly. In all of that, Keith, in case we are just not getting the signal, but the viewers are, Primus, guessing correctly, 
extending his massive frame to the right. A low, powerful, initially looked like it was going home, Trevor. Well taken penalty, fiercely struck and low. Primus made it down to his right and stuck that paw out, as they would say, like a big polar bear. And that was all it took. Now he's paying the price of having saved that penalty because no one collided with him, but he's getting some medical attention. I'm going to go research the reason. There you go, as we got our signal flicking in and out. The penalty, well, the Jamaican player indeed used his guile to commit the Barbadian player or to draw the Barbadian player into committing the foul. And as a result of which, Trevor, the charity on the spot, good approach. He looked positive, but Primus, Trevor, tonight was his night so far. Uh, Primus read it like a Hollywood movie, the script that is. And as the ball was placed to his right, he stuck out a very strong right hand. And was, and, and was able to parry the ball, not into touch, but back into play. And then the clearance was made. So Barbados survived a small scare in the early minutes of the second half. And they're able to pull themselves right back out of it to maintain the two-goal cushion over neighbors to the north. Jamaica, the reggae boys. So the current score remains Barbados 2, Jamaica nil on 50 and a half minutes. Well, one of the things that I inquired about is about this Jamaica team. Here's the penalty again. And again, it's gone, the signal. But to me, it was a very weak penalty, Trevor. It didn't have any pace or power, but a very, very good save. And five of these players decided made their debut against Grenada. And it's surely showing here now tonight at the Wilde uh, turf. At the moment, Barbados leading by two goals to nil. So as Bar Barbados lead, the arts to defend here now in numbers because the Jamaicans are coming, charging forward. 51 and a half minutes on the clock. Oh, uh, a little bit of a pickpocket there, took the ball away. But uh, referee more out of Guyana saw it differently and blew for an infringement against the Barbadians there. Barbados going from right to left from our commentary position here. Uh, on top the second floor of the BFA artificial grass surface here at Wildey. Spanking brand new facility here. And with this particular matchup against the Jamaicans, as strong as they are, there's still another two games to go, Keith. As you said before, it is the Cubans coming a calling on the 26th and 28th of the month. Right foot shot coming in, and it is a it's a beauty, but it just evades the near post. Primus scrambling for all he's worth, and the ball making its way just outside. Uh, this man Vaseldo is very accurate, Keith, when it comes to shooting his finishing. Uh, is on par with uh, the, those top strikers in the Caribbean as well as we saw against uh, the Grenada team. Scored a couple of beauties there and he's surely a set play, a dead ball situation man here this evening. And Primus thanking his lucky stars that that one didn't make its way into the back of the nets. But uh, surely that's a warning sign for the Bajan Tridents that Jamaica uh, coming and coming for at least one of those two goals uh, to bring some respect back to this score. In, the, in this particular encounter. Well, yes, most persons would have thought that the ball had wrestled in the back of the net, but it went into the side netting in the end, and Barbados have survived that moment. But I'm sure that Primus may have to be replaced. Uh, he's there now with the medical staff, and it looked like Box Hill is going to replace him after he saved that penalty. He's had a good night so far, and the veteran keeper, Box Hill, to replace Primus. But Barbados would have to be very, very careful because the Jamaicans, despite their immaturity, are looking to fight back and maintain the reggae boys' outstanding record of not being beaten since October. And Barbados, having not scored a goal for the year, leading 2-0 on this night, have an opportunity, Trev, 
to stamp the authority on the game by scoring another goal or just killing off the Jamaicans by maintaining positive ball possession. Well, that's for sure, Keith. The switch has been made. Boxhill, the Paradise number one. Barbados is number two at this point in time, is on to the field of play after 54 minutes. Kishmar Primus, after the penalty, was never the same. And um, here's Ed May, the goal scorer of the second one, making himself a nuisance, going one-on-one -on -one against Talbot. Talbot feeling the pressure as Ed May was about to go past him. But I'm almost sure of it that the infringement has been given to the Barbadians here. And Talbot needed some medical attention and uh, the two medics making their way onto the field of play now for the Jamaican Talbot who's down in a heap. And Primus is in tears there as you with the medic, the Barbadian uh, medic there. And he is in tremendous pain after saving the penalty. But a lot of fireworks on the field. You know, normally when Jamaica play Barbados, there's lots of fireworks. And our friends to the right over by the hockey festival, they're having a good night out for us. <laughs> and I must say, the crowd have come out in numbers. This is the biggest crowd I've ever seen here at the Wilde Say, uh, at the Wilde Turf. Yeah, apart from the Stag Bear Champions Cup final uh, night on, Ema on Emancipation evening, this is definitely uh, uh, one of the biggest crowds that I've seen as well. And uh, a nice added attraction would be the live band, brass and all, keeping things jiggy here as we continue to give you live commentary. Yours truly, Trevor Thorne from Commentator Sports Incorporated, alongside the maestro himself, Keith Grell Griffith. Well, I know Sampo and Lawrence and all those guys in the chat room, they're listening. They're enjoying the game, I believe. Barbados leading 2 0 with a free kick. Halfway inside the reggae boys off. Early promise by Jamaica in the second half. A penalty bit to fail to convert, but it's back to Trevor. It's Jules with the free kick, and uh, that's harmless. Didn't get enough pace and power on it to trouble goalkeeper Hyatt, and he dived all over it and was able to control and deliver the pass. Jamaica coming out of their defence, giving up possession now. Ed May will look to spread it wide, brings Harris into play, the change ball. Over to Armando Sugar Lashley as he gets on his bike down this left hand side. Looks to cut the ball across the 18 yard box. Fouled in the process, the Jamaican there. And the Jamaican will have a free kick then. This one is just about uh, 22 yards out from their goal line. Strong challenge from Hill. Continues to go down the left hand side. Fouls in the process. And the Jamaicans take possession. Will want to play it. Looking for an outlet is Reed. Down the right hand side. Puts the ball across the box and a good clearance from Raheem Sargent. Reading that one by like a Hollywood movie script there, Keith. Coming right across from his right back position to play centrally and clear his lines and um, give Barbados some breathing space. Here's Reed. Right for shot and it's far of the, just past the far post on this occasion but Jamaica creeping right back into it Keith Barbados taking the lead on just about 33 minutes with Rashad Jules the second goal scored by Zico Edme on 44 but since then Jamaica have had a penalty which they've which has been saved by Kishmar Primus who's gone off injured and Reed getting his shooting boots on but dragging his shot away 2-0 to Barbados on 58 minutes I beg your pardon while well, Jamaica probing and searching as they did in the opening 15 minutes of the first half, Barbados a little disorganized at the back, especially on the left-hand side. And they will have to really tighten their defensive play if they're going to maintain the 2-0 lead. Jamaica, on the other hand, desperate to get a goal, to get back into the game. And that also will give Barbados a chance to get a third goal. So the game really living up to uh, the expectations of the fans Good movement, good passing, two good goals from Barbados, and the Jamaicans looking to probe and search. But once they're under pressure, the Jamaicans seem not able to keep the ball as good as when you back on. At the moment, though, Jamaica going forward again. So, Barbados now fighting two for nil. Williams with the clearance, he slides on his backside, and that one into touch. Jamaica will have a throw just past the half line 
59 minutes on the clock. Uh, nice, intriguing game here, building at the Barbados Football Association's headquarters here at Wildy. And the home crowd enjoying the 2-0 lead. Sliding tackle coming in as the Barbadians bring themselves a free kick just past the half line. Played short by Harris. In fact, a longer ball played all the way back to his defence. He finds Ramar Miller. Miller goes wide. Jules, the goal scorer of goal number one on just about 33 minutes. But here comes Jamaica now towards the centre of Barbados' goal. Leading ball played again. And the clearance has been made. Barbados soaking up the pressure. Enjoying a two-goal cushion. A nice little dummy there. And the Jamaicans now take hold of it. That Shaw spreads it wide into Thomas. Thomas with the leading ball inside the 18-yard box. The attempted clearance by Jules is unsuccessful. Thomas again. This time finding Shaw. Shaw down the left. Ball played to the inside. Square ball. Cleared out by... To Rick Highland, the right foot shot coming in from the Jamaican striker on this occasion. 60 minutes in, two thirds of the game. Goal, Keith. Barbados running things here in their home base, just as Jamaica would do in the office. 2 0 to Barbados over Jamaica. Well, sure, Barbados still comfortably in the lead, but defensively, a little bit of bother and a little bit of worry. And Barbados will need to be a little more composed and tight at the back if they're going to maintain the lead. The Jamaicans, hopeful and probing and searching, but can't find at the moment. Box Hill with a goal kick. Defensive header from Shaw. Ball finding Hill on this left-hand side. And ball into Sugar Lashley. Rob the bit. Jamaica coming forward. Hill again. Spreads it wide right. Jules in a very defensive position here. That's the long ball out of defense. In comes Williams. Zico Phillips giving it, Zico Edme giving it away rather cheaply there. And Jamaica now coming out of their defense on the left hand side. That's uh, Thomas. Ball all the way back to their captain in Ladesi Ritchie. Richie under some pressure from Ed May. Turns 180. And Jamaica changed the point of attack. This time it's Mc yeah, McCarthy. The leading ball down the right overcomes Boxhill. He says, I have it. And his defense move over the way smartly enough. And allow Boxhill to pick it up. Very experienced keeper, Boxhill is Keith. So the number of internationals for Barbados. He, a couple of years ago, uh, he, he, did, he was a bit hot-headed, but now he seemed to have got that under wraps and is able to control himself rather well. You could almost guarantee that he would give away a little something every now and then, maybe a free kick or a penalty. But since then, since his time uh, in the this last setup with the national team, he's been able to cool his head. And here comes Shaw. Wants to play that leading ball. Cuts past one. Will have the right foot shot and the Ball charged down by Miller and subsequently taken control of by Boxhill who bides his time before he picks it up. 63 minutes on the clock. Barbados are ahead with the 2-0 lead over the Jamaica Reggae Boys. Well, that is maturity. He has improved tremendously and he has been able also to guide Paradise to the Knockout Championship, the Stag Knockout Cup. And this is his opportunity to prove that he is deserving of being in the squad. Charge for three, yes. Brilliant stuff there from Barbados. The build-up was good. The shot was exquisite. But of course, good goalkeeping from Damien Hayat. Rods the ball away just as it was about to hit the back of the nets. The score remains Barbados 2, Jamaica nil. Well, I must say that Tapo Whitmore, the coach of Jamaica, is not happy at all. He's standing there. He's asking his team to play a lot better than they have but Barbados playing well at the moment but they're now defending because Jamaica going forward on a run chance for Jamaica to pull a goal back good movement good tackle again coming in Barbados back in numbers play 
and danger for it in momentarily and Barbados on the counter attack. So what was a flowy move Keith brought to a halt by a Johnny Talbot there taking Hill and Holligan off his feet. And Barbados now have a free kick in a very serious uh, position which they've taken short as the play continues down the left-hand side. Ball over the touchline and into touch for a goal kick. 65 minutes on the clock. This is about the time that most coaches will and technical directors would want to see a few more players. And we've seen Ahmed Mohamed warming uh, a number of players. The technical director now getting busy with his bench and he would want to keep a clean sheet here and the Jamaicans would want to prove him wrong by coming forward this time with the likes of Vassell, ball towards the edge of the box. Charts here for the right foot shot, and it's a good cover challenge as well. As we see Akeen Hill working very hard to block that ball and put it into touch for a Jamaica set piece here now. Is it throwing, well, taking quickly. The Jamaicans travel are really causing lots of problems going down the left hand defensive side of Barbados comes in with a short a weak shot so Barbados will need to readjust and reorganize defensively on the left hand side of defense but Barbados with possession deep inside their own half so McCarthy spreading it wide and this time finding Morgan down the right go the Jamaicans Still knocking it here, there, and everywhere. McCarthy, twisting and turning. Over to Shaw. Shaw then prodding forward as the Jamaicans put together five, six touches. It's a far post ball. Uh, that one drifts harmlessly over the crossbar of the Barbadian keeper, Jason Boxhill. And we're just about 66 minutes gone. Barbados still in the ascendancy. Two goals to nil over the Jamaicans. Goal scored on just about 33 minutes by Rashad Jules, the captain of the Barbados Senior Men's National Team. And the second goal, his partner in profit would be Zico Edme prodding home with a right foot on 44 minutes. Barbados went to the half, two nil up, and maintained that lead on 67 minutes. So here comes Jamaica. Good turn from Vassell. Leading ball played down the right hand side. Chance for the square. There's Tariq Highland making himself a nuisance and prods the ball over the touchline. We'll have a, a quick restart by the Jamaicans as they look to prod and prod and come across the centre perhaps. In fact, no, they're going down the right hand side. Looks to square now. There's Amanda Lashley with the clearance. Well, it's under the cross quite a bit in this last five minutes as Jamaica look for something here now. Right foot shot coming in and off the post, I believe, as Boxhill puts two fingers on it. Jamaica really prodding and probing and applying the pressure. No luck whatsoever, but good defending from Barbados. He must give them kudos. They've been able to weather the store, storm and maintain the two-goal cushion. Yellow card straight away, says referee more from Guyana doesn't like what he would have seen from Zico Edme and on just about 68 minutes Keith first yellow card of the game going to Zico Edme from Barbados well again Barbados under the course but surviving try of a good shot coming in and in the end the danger averted it happened very quickly and then Edme giving away a free kick the Jamaicans about to make a substitution but surely Barbados would have to be careful with 68 minutes gone. Still a lot of time left in the game. And they will not want to concede a goal at this time. So Jamaica looking to make a change. We'll have a look at the, the board and see exactly what this will mean for the Jamaicans. But for sure it is Alex And Barbados Marshall. about to make a substitution too. Marshall has made his way onto the field of play for the Jamaicans. 
Barbados also going with a change too. Amanda Sugar Lashley off the field of play. Left foot shot coming in. And the Rico King, I believe it is, wearing number 13 for Barbados, making his way on to the field of play. 69 minutes gone. Barbados with the 2-0 lead over Jamaica. Well, Jamaica pushing, trying, but not being able to find Barbados in a comfortable tuning lead. We'll need to slow the game down a little bit, keep possession of the ball, frustrate the Jamaicans if they're going to win this game because if Jamaica can get a goal back, Barbados will have to work very hard defensively. And at the moment, the ball is running very good for Barbados. Missed penalty by Jamaica. Good save from the experienced Boxhill. And Barbados is still in the ascendancy, but with a lot of time to go. 69 and a half minutes gone. Barbados to Jamaica, nil. So that ball over the touchline. Raheem Sargent will restart it with the throw. Down the lane it goes. Control is bad, and Jamaica then take possession, just cutting past the half line. Leading ball played. This is danger for Barbados. The right foot shot and the good save from Boxhill. Outstretches, uh, if he stretches that right leg out and parries the ball away. He was going one way, Keith, and had to readjust his positioning to clear with his right foot. Well, that was all brilliant experience there from. Boxel and the Barbadian players are beginning to play a little bit ragged and a little bit crazy defensively when they don't need to do that at all. But again, Barbados, when they come up against Cuba on Sunday, will have to strengthen their left side, Trevor, because Jamaica have torn Barbados apart time and time again on the left defensive side. And it is only brilliant goalkeeping from Boxel on two occasions that have kept the Jamaicans out. Unnecessary yellow card again. Barbados to defend. So free kick. This is Peter Vassell from 40 yards. He drives it into the wall. Four-man wall holding very strong there. And allowing that one to uh, ricochet off the wall and over the touchline. Restart taken quickly. Jamaica looking to square. Clearance made. Double clearance that would be as... Sergeant gets involved as well. That's Ed May looking to put it forward with the with the toes. Here comes Vassell. He's inching his way towards the 18-yard box. Pods it back to substitute who top. Oh, this is a brilliant save by Boxer. Oh, fabulous stuff here at Wildey. You would have seen Alex Marshall weave a web past two defenders, smashed it with his right foot. But Boxer equal to the task. Barbados two, Jamaica nil. Well, boxes have been brilliant, Bobby Wade, because Jamaica come again, and this time into the side netting. But even though Boxer have now come on, he can go down as the man of the match. Three brilliant saves within side 10 minutes. So, Barbados on the Dikosh, Keith, if we can borrow that one from you. But Boxer quells the danger. Three brilliant saves within about a 13 minute period. And Barbados maintained their 2-0 lead. Uh, Jamaica really coming alive in the second half. If you, if you say, um, if you think the first half was action, the second half was definitely an all-action affair. And so far, Barbados maintained their 2-0 lead with just about 73 minutes on the clock. As we say goodnight to uh, two friends of mine, Mr. Marshall out of Brooklyn, New York, and Mr. Ibo Oxley as well as they're both locked and loaded and enjoying the live coverage of Trident 10's friendly international, Barbados versus Jamaica. Well, Boxer was brilliant. And he was at his brilliant best on that final save. We wait for the corner kick. So near post ball and the defensive tactics deployed by the Jamaicans as the ball is played over the goal line for another corner. Barbados now enjoying the second corner on the trot. Similar to the first half where Jamaicans were pressing down this uh, left-hand side and getting lots of joy, Barbados have decided to go this side of the field as well. And so far, two corners in succession. Far post ball taken cleanly by goalkeeper Damien Hayat, who plays for Arnett Gardens in the Jamaica Premier League. 
there's Tariq Highland. And a good clearance made by Williams, trying to turn defense into attack. Very composed, the Jamaican central defender, uh, Captain Ladesi Ritchie. Fit one way, Keith, and went the other, created space for himself for the pass. Williams will look to connect a few passes, finds Miller. Miller then searches and finds Sargent, and the resulting pass from Harris given up. There's Williams again. Sargent looking to redeem himself. Ball played it to this right hand side. Chance for Jamaica to go for the leading ball played. A uh, bit too much. A bit too much on it there, Keith. A bit too much. Well, that is so true. But Trevor, one of the biggest concerns from a technical and tactical perspective is that Barbados' left defensive side seemed very, very weak. And every time the Jamaicans probe and come down that side, Barbados comes under the caution, under pressure. And against the Cubans who may have, have a scout watching, they would have to strengthen that. And saying that Barbados will be playing Guyana and El Salvador in a few weeks' time, surely, defensively, Barbados will have to improve. Uh, I'm sure the technical director is having a look at this. And I would think that one solution, Keith, would be to allow Captain Rashad Jules to come and sit very much uh, close to, very much closer to Akeen Hill. And that would allow for him to get a little bit of breathing space. And it would also deploy five men in defense, which could easily nullify what Jamaica are trying to do. Uh, whether or not he's seen what we are seeing from this angle and this height is another matter. Uh, because Jules continues to play on the right-hand side of the field rather than come over on the left-hand side and perhaps help out Akil Hill. He's one of those players that has a brilliant left foot as well. So therefore, he can start the attacks from in that withdrawn position and then make his way by playing those little one-twos with the, the likes of Joe Moore Harris or even Mario Williams as he comes over. So for me, the deploy should be that Jules will come over, help Akeen Hill by playing a more, much more withdrawn defensive position that will allow Barbados to, to breathe a little easier and it will also nullify what Jamaica are doing down there, down their right-hand side as the likes of Morgan and Isaacs uh, come, come to the party this evening. Well, Barbados would also need to calm the game down, seeing that Barbados are still leading 2-0. They don't have to hustle and probe at the moment they have just to maintain defensive organization because the strategy by really good teams is how well you can play on defense when you are in the lead. And Barbados will need to do that because this Jamaica young team has been able to penetrate and it is only the brilliance of Box Hill and earlier Primus that have kept Barbados alive in the second half. So far, so good 2-0. We have had a break. Barbados making a couple of substitutions and surely... As we go inside the last 15 minutes, Barbados will be hoping to hold on and maintain the lead and gain a victory over the reggae boys. So 77 minutes on the clock as we welcome young teenage striker Thierry Gale wearing the number 14 for the Bajan Tridents this evening. Taking a rest would be goal scorer Zico Edme who scored the second goal on 44 minutes and also got a yellow card on 68. Gale can do the business and if they can get the ball up to Gale Keith then he could be the surprise package for both the Jamaicans and Barbados. <laughs> Barbados hoping that he will get the third goal and kill the Jamaicans off. But of course Jamaica not finished, never are and never will be at 2-0. You'll need the all elusive third goal to put them to bed and allow the fat lady to sing. One of the Jamaicans have gone down injured there from an elbow. Very quick it happened and he is reeling in pain, and the game has been pulled back. At this time, Barbados just need to keep the composure, Trevor. They're giving away too many unnecessary free kicks, and they would want to maintain possession of the ball, push the ball around, frustrate the Jamaicans, run the clock down, kill the game off, and walk away here from the Wildy Turf with a comfortable victory. Uh, the battle, Keith, between um, substitute Derico King and the Jamaican midfield player, the guy that pulls all his strings, Tevin Shaw, will be a, a, a nice, interesting one. Whoever wins that battle this evening will probably win the game as well because you really don't want to let Shaw get away from you as he's putting the passes together and looking to find the likes of Reed, Vassell, 
Marsh, and Morgan. So if um, the Barbadian in Derrico King really, is, really knows what his task is, he will need to shut down Shaw and stop the flow of balls to the Barbados left back area and therefore avert the danger. This is a leading ball here into Vassell. He takes one man, shoots with his right foot, charge down. And this is King doing just exactly what we spoke about, mopping it up just in front of the, the last defenders there. Ball across the right-hand side, charge for Jamaica. Nevers finishes. Goal! Danger we spoke before. Marvin Morgan, double F, double M, has done it for the Jamaicans. He's been marvellous, Keith. He's been able to find that pocket of space over on the Barbados left. And it's about the third time that he's took the ball onto his right foot and powered a shot across. This time around, Boxel not equal to the task. And Jamaicans are back. Jamaica won, Barbados two. Well, Trevor, I may not be in the class of the Pep Guardiola's and Arsene Wenger and those guys and Didier the Champs, but surely my knowledge of the game has not gone because I knew that Barbados were treading on dangerous waters defensively on the left arm side. And that is where the goal came from. And Boxel, after being terrific with three saves, was beaten at the near post. But you can see it coming that Barbados defensively on the left side need to strengthen that. It was not strengthened. And in the end, Barbados have conceded a goal and they would have to defend a lot better as we come inside the closing minutes of the game. Here we go, this is Harris. He plays that leading ball down the right-hand side, asking a lot of Sergeant. He won't reach it today or tomorrow. And the ball over the touchline for a Jamaica goal kick. The final 10 minutes, Keith, needs to be managed if Barbados are gonna get away and get out of here with the 2-1 victory as it is right now. We thought it might have remained two goals to nil, but definitely some attention needed to be paid to the left back positions where Akeem Hill and uh, less, to a lesser extent Tariq Highland are occupying those positions. The Jamaicans realizing that that, that is not as cohesive uh, a back two on that left hand side as Barbados would have wanted and they've been able to deploy the likes of Marvin Morgan to channel the balls through that area and pop shots off at our keeper. And it seems as though it's only a matter of time before they can get something in the game. And now we really have a game on with just about 81 and a half minutes gone. Here's playmaker Shaw again down the right, the square ball in. Hill equal to the task on this occasion. And then the clearance made as Barbados weather the storm in the 82nd minute. That's a far post ball and much too much on it on this occasion. Barbers will breathe easy as they look to reorganize their defense. And hopefully they've seen what we've seen. I'm now seeing Jules now picking up a spot on the left-hand side of the midfield key. So this is exactly what we were speaking about. Seem to have seen where the issue was and he's now come across to this left-hand side to assist the likes of Tariq Highland and Akeen Hill. So maybe the score would uh, reflect that and remain the same unless Jamaica get even smarter and maybe switch the point of attack and try to go to the other side. I believe they're going to continue to come down the right side in the last few minutes because they recognize that they have that ability to do that. Jamaica going forward again, Barbados under the pressure. A penalty, there, a penalty. Ooh, the That's a penalty. That's a penalty, Trevor. Barbados have really lost the way. And Jamaica with a second penalty to make it 2-2. So Sergeant seemed to have, Raheem Sergeant at right back seemed to have lost the flight of the ball, Keith. And as he spun to try to pick back up his position and keep the attacker off, he was a judge to have handled it with his right hand. And the penalty has been given. This is Vassell. Two goals in the Grenada encounter in that 5-1 victory on Friday night. He's an ace marksman, orange boots and all. And Boxel will need to be an instant hero here if Barbados are to get hold of here with the victory. 2-1 to Barbados. And this is Vassell and finishes to the right 
of Box Hill. Jamaica are back. They've clawed their way back in this second half. It's two goals apiece. Jamaica two, Barbados two. Well, that was clinical finishing. And for me, Trevor, tonight, on the pitch, he has been the outstanding player for Jamaica. He has pulled the strings. He has controlled the midfield. And now, at a critical time, he has converted the penalty. Barbados would have to be careful not to throw away the game because there's six minutes of normal time. And by my calculations, about five minutes to be added on for stoppages. Yeah, it's going to be a, a rough five minutes. Hold on to your seats, folks. Don't even go to get a snack or a cup of tea. This one is boiling over. Here, it's two goals apiece with just about five minutes to go. Who wants it more? Who's going to go hard and who's going to go home? We wait to see. Just about five minutes to go. You're listening to live coverage of the Friendly International, a Tier 1 matchup between Barbados and Jamaica. Yours truly, Trevor Thorne from Commentator Sports Incorporated, alongside Keith Greg Griffith, with every single kick, free kick, set play, dead ball situation, volley, half volley, goal, brace, hat trick, beaver trick, yellow red card disputes too. We got them all here on the CSI computers. That's an infringement there. Referee Moore brings it back and has a quick word as well. And he needs to pay some attention to the Jamaican on the far side who's injured. On come the medics. And with just about 85 minutes on the clock with five minutes to go, Keith, who wants it most? Well, Trevor, that is true. But if you analyze the second half correctly, Barbados have not taken a shot or tested Jamaica defense at all. And what is worrying going forward? That Barbados would have to improve considerably when they play Cuba on Sunday night because I noticed also that there was a lot of tearing of legs midway through the second half and Barbados side went down once Jamaica had scored and then after the penalty was converted Barbados didn't seem in my opinion respectfully to be able to keep the ball long Trevor because that would be the key when you're leading 2-0 you must be able to keep the ball frustrate the opposition, don't give them an opportunity, and with them having missed the penalty, and then three brilliant saves from the keeper who came in, I thought that Barbados would have been able to hold on, but now they're struggling, they're under the cosh, and it's gonna take very good defensive organization to come out of this one, and surely the Jamaicans will be feeling copper hoop, and knowing that they were two nil down at half time, and to come back to the, the position they're in, and even though they're down to 10 men because one of their players have gone off on the far side, they're still with a free kick and a chance to put pressure on Barbados. So here it is, the restart as the Jamaicans twist and turn and find Shaw, Shaw across the center of the defense, Talbot, back to Shaw again as they look for the openings in this Barbados defense. That's Vassell giving up possession to the dangerous Jules, who plays the 40 yard pass over to the right hand side. Perhaps he could have held on to that ball a little bit longer and allow for a few more players to come up the field, but in the end, it all works out well. Back to Sergeant, it goes down the line in towards King, whose second touch of the ball is a poor one. Gives up possession. The leading ball played down the Barbados right. Here comes. Yeah, here comes the central defender as he. Clears his lines, that's Miller into Sergeant who drifts past one, then cuts past the second man, plays a nice ball down the right hand side, but the ball into touch for a Jamaica throw. Taken quickly, 87, you know, almost 88 minutes gone on the clock. Middle of the Jamaica defense, Talbot in towards goal scorer Morgan, who got the first goal as Jamaica. Went on to tie it, two goals apiece. The defensive header over the touchline. Uh, with just about 88 minutes on the clock, Keith. Final minutes of it. Barbados about to make another substitution as we look to pick up where the change is going to occur. Looks as though Rashad Smith is going to make his way onto the field of play. The BDF sports program defensive, uh, in fact, central defender. Looking to shore things up for Barbados and hold on to this 2-2 two, this two, two tie at this point in time. And 
just about a, a minute and a half of regular time on the clock before we get to the 90th minute. Jamaica looking to prod and probe in the middle of their dif in the middle of their midfield as the game picks up pace and we head towards the 89th minute. This is Holligan plays the leading ball outside to Harris who tries to find. <laughs> yes, he does. He absolutely tries everything within his will, Keith, to try to find Thierry Gale. But the pass doesn't have the quality to reach Gale and the Jamaica team with the quick restart. We're trying from to the So Jamaica coming forward in numbers. Five minutes of time added on for stoppages. Here comes Ajani Talbert, plays the leading ball into goal scorer Morgan, who tries to play the low one two, loses possession. And coming forward. <laughs> In a very positive way, Alex Marshall draws the foul from the Barbados midfield who were uh, ganging up on him, Keith. The, <laughs> one tackle after the other. Eventually, referee Sherwin Moore has seen enough and decided to give the free kick to the Jamaicans. It's uh, 45, almost 50 yards out. I don't think they'll be trying a shot from here, but for sure they would want to test this uh, five-man Barbados defense at this point in time so the delivery with Fabian McCarthy in towards the D of the 18 yard box attacking header from Shaw the change ball over to the left hand side this time finding Ricardo Thomas he plays the leading ball instead cut out at the back as Harris looks to come forward settle things down with the seven yard pass sliding tackle Barbara still in possession King spreads it wide Takes the return ball, tries to go through the legs of Shaw. Shaw closes the legs and the possession then is seeded back to Barbados again. Down the right-hand side as Double H, Aiden Holland looks to go on a run down the right. But of course, reading very well is Ricardo Thomas on this occasion. And the ball played into touch for a Barbados throw on 90 plus one. Well, we're into time added on for stoppages, five minutes of it. Barbados would have to lift their game in the closing minutes. They're coming with a long lead in throw, we wait and see. So it's a long throw, Keith, and the clearance made by Damien Hayat. He clobbers the ball and then clobbers the attacker as well in Harris. Overcomes referee Moore and immediately points in the opposite direction. As the Jamaicans win themselves a free kick on the far side. A bit of tugging and pulling there, Keith. And more equal to the task. And seeing that the uh, Jamaicans will be in disadvantage, immediately gives the free kick. So Jamaica, slow. Quick, quick, slow. Almost a waltz here. As they knock it around in squares and triangles. The leading ball played. Out comes Boxel. You'll need a clean pair of gloves there to take that one as he does so now. The change that we saw though, Keith, for Barbados, where uh, they're looking to bring on a defensive-minded player in Rashad Smith, suggests that uh, Coach Ahmed Mohamed has seen enough to know at this point in time he may not get out of here with a victory and he would want to take the draw and just have some insurance that he, he gets a draw out of this game. Having scored two early goals, you really wouldn't want to concede another one and lose this particular match. As Jamaica now make uh, another substitution on 90 plus three. Well, yes, Jamaica have really done extremely well in the second half to come back from 2-0 down under the court and under lots of pressure. They started positively gaining a penalty despite Primus did very well and saved the penalty. Then it was down to the brilliance of Box Hill to keep Barbados in the lead. But the Jamaicans came roaring back. And I believe, Trevor, in my heart, that a 2 2 result will be a fair result for the night. Well, just about, we've seen Barrington Bryce 
coming onto the field of play. And he will try to make his presence felt for the Jamaicans with time running out on the clock. We're in that fourth minute of time added on for stoppages. And as you said before, perhaps a fair result is the 2-2. Comparing the possession, which Jamaica enjoyed a good bit more of it in the first half before Barbados really pulled the all, uh, pulled the pulled some strings and got two goals by bulging the old onion bike. And there again, up to his tricks again, Vassell looking to spray one across the far side. As the players go 50-50, this is Jules. He's just past one, past the second man, raised the tackle. Jamaican's coming forward in numbers. Referee Moore is rather busy as he tries to sort this one out. But in the end, he's given the foul to the Jamaicans on 90 plus four, Keith. Well, Barbados have been lucky to maintain 11 men on the field. I believe if this was a competitive international, Barbados could have been down to 10 men with some careless tackling and unnecessary fouls because all they need to do, Trev, is compose themselves, keep ball possession, run the clock down, and settle for the 2-2 draw. After third goal comes, so be it, but they can't afford to continue to make so many mistakes at the back and give away so much unnecessary fouls. Yeah, you found that as the game has gone on, though, Keith, the composure for the Barbarians have gone out of it quite a bit, and therefore that's responsible for them giving away the ball so often. If they keep the composure, then they'll be back to the passing game. Here we go with the Jamaican Morgan, who tries to sidestep one of the players. The clearance made this time by Tariq Highland. As he, he, he clears with real purpose over to the far side rather than up the field. Still under pressure are the Bajan Tridents. The 90 plus four, in fact, plus five has now elapsed, Keith. And I'm almost sure of it that the any minute now, uh, Guyanese referee Sherwin Moore will blow the final whistle on the matchup, and it is just that. Referee Sherwin Moore from out of Guyana brings the game to a close. Two goals apiece on the night as Rashad Jules give Barbados the lead on 33 minutes. Zico Edme made it 2-0 on 44 minutes. The Jamaicans went into the half-time whistle 2-0 down. Got refreshments, got fresh instructions, Keith. Came out with a purpose. Marvin Morgan on 80 minutes. And Peter Vassell, as you said, probably the man of the match for the Jamaicans. While Jason Boxall came in for a cameo. He too is in contention for a man of the match performance. But in the end, the Peter Vassell penalty kick on 84 minutes made it two goals apiece. Barbados 2, Jamaica 2 is the classified result after 90 plus five minutes. From a professional and tactical perspective, the result is a fitting one, two, two. Barbados played a very good first half, scored two good goals. The Jamaicans dominated the second half and deserve a draw. Brilliant goalkeeping from Box Hill, clinical finishing from the Jamaicans in the end. And overall, a game that will bring the fans back out on Sunday night when Barbados play Cuba. So everyone should go away, joyous four goals, both teams showing good outstanding halves. But I must say, I am totally impressed, Trevor, with the brilliance of the number 17 player from Jamaica. He is a player of the future. And Boxhill, with all of his experience and expertise, did Barbados proud. Well, certainly did here. Vassell was a star for the Jamaicans, but can't take nothing away from Kishmar Primus, who was brilliant while he was on the field. And of course, when um, Boxel came on, he too shone very brightly. And uh, a fitting result then, as far as the 2 2 draw goes. Lots of uh, intricate passes in this second half. The first half was a bit disjointed, but it certainly came alight after Barbados had scored the first goal and went on to get the second. But if you know the Jamaicans, our northern neighbors never really finished until the fat lady sings, were able to buckle down and through the likes of Peter Vassell, uh, Marvin Morgan, Tevon Shaw wearing number eight, and to a slightly lesser extent, the likes of Fabian Reed with his endless running, and Siobhan Marshall, and of course the defensive tactics of Ladesi Richie, who went off on about 88 or so minutes, or in fact 90 plus four minutes, the captain for Jamaica. A brilliant performance by all 11 players on the field of play, and of course the substitutes as well. 
as we say, congratulations to the Barbados Football Association for putting on this uh, this magnificent game this evening. We look forward to Cuba in a couple of days' time. Yours truly, Trevor Thorne, about to pass to Martin Paris. Oh, and that's usually a deadly combination, a, a death pass from Trevor. Uh, tale of two halves, and uh, I guess depends on what you were looking for as a coach out of this encounter. Jamaica, ranking points, almost 100 higher than Barbados, basically. 2-0, um, halftime, you can't fool yourself. Uh, turning points, uh, for sure. The injury to Primus and then Boxo having to come in. And then the other substitutes that uh, were made. Uh, you also have the scenario where the Jamaicans probably walk up and realize, hang on, this is a low, lower ranked Barbados playing against Jamaica. They're not two goals better than we are. <laughs> and they did turn up the tempo a bit. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, two goals apiece, a draw. Fitting result for the effort put in by Jamaica in the second half. Barbados may well have been able to ha hold on and uh, be able to rub some egg or a little bit of pride in the face. But in a two-all draw, uh, both teams will have to be satisfied with the fact that neither of them lose, lost the game. Uh, it's a case where now you know what you're capable of. The first half, scoring the goals, managed to satisfy the Barbadian crowd that the team is capable of actually scoring some goals. And unfortunately, the two goals given up were basically gifts. Could have been three, two the final score. Primus, until he got that injury, was indeed on top of his game and managed to pull off that save before he went off injured. Uh, any closing words, Trevor? Well, the as, as you say, the CSA stats will show that Jamaica are actually fourth in the CONCACAF region, 54 in the world. Barbados themselves uh, now trying to climb their way out of uh, a slump that they were in and therefore uh, 18th in CONCACAF, 160 on the FIFA rankings and surely that 2-2 two -two draw will augur well for Barbados now trying to get some of those same ranking points to climb their way uh, up, the, up the scale a bit and get closer to the 100s uh, which is the target but of course the performance as well needed to be critiqued and because it is a friendly international. We'll be looking at the way in which Barbados would have scored their goals in um, providing lots of pressure and being able to allow for Jules and Edmund to get on the score sheet by cutting the uh, Jamaica and slicing through their defence like a knife through butter to get the two goals. But Jamaica, never to be outdone, came, came roaring back and a 2-2 result, uh, a 2 2 scoreline, a fitting result here from the Barbados Football Association's headquarters here at Wildy. Interesting that in the warming down process, both teams chose to go closer to their fans on the far side of the of the facility to sit down and do their warm down and have their little interaction. Some of the players are still interacting, at least the local players, Barbadian players, with some of the fans. And uh, the Jamaican team is all stretched out and perhaps they were given a run for their money and had to battle back Trevor and show their caliber and I guess justifying their higher ranking by at least coming back to, to prove the game kind of started to disintegrate and, and, and go into one of those uh, cheap fouls scenarios. The fans who stayed on for the hockey festival I took a nip over there, Trevor, and, and I interacted with them. They were glad they were able to see it, wish they could have come in. And uh, like I said, I'm sure in your playing days, you'd rather play in front of a million non-paying fans than an empty facility. And um, hopefully something can be done to encourage a, a joint project between the Hockey Festival people and the Football Association. That's not my 
purview. It's not my area of expertise. I am not the marketing officer of the Barbados Football Association. In fact, I'm just a lowly anchor here on Trident 10. What an enjoyable game. If you were a neutral, you would have seen four goals, two apiece. Uh, I guess it's par for the course. Barbados doing what they needed to do. And Jamaica giving as good as they got. Managing to get the two-all draw. Well, yeah, the two teams from here, though, uh, they're really preparing for the 2018 Senior Men's CONCACAF Nations League first round, actually. The Jamaicans are warming up for the real competition, which starts on September 9th for them. The first match against Cayman Islands uh, in Jamaica. They then travel to Bonaire for their second match in October, and then in November, they take on Suriname at home before jumping into 2019 and uh, heading over to El Salvador. And what about the Bajans? Yeah, the Bajans themselves will um, look to entertain, in fact, go over to Georgetown, Guyana, and take on the Guyana Jaguars on September 3rd. They then travel to El Salvador on October 7th to entertain El Salvador at high altitude <laughs> before coming right back in November to play their third matchup and they'll be playing right here at the artificial grass surface against the USVI United States Virgin Islands on November 11th before jumping right into 2019 to finish off the first round against Nicaragua here in Barbados as well so two away games and then two home games for Barbados Jamaica slightly uh, staggered a home game first followed by a away game in Bonaire and then back at home to Suriname and then they head over to El Salvador for their final game. So two contrasting sets of matches. Jamaica, as you can tell, are behind the likes of Mexico, USA and Costa Rica are first, second and third in CONCACAF. Jamaica are fourth and the Bajans behind the likes of Suriname, Dominican Republic, Guatemala, St. Kitts and Nevis and of course Guyana. Uh, 27th in CONCACAF, so Barbados doing a little bit better than them, and you would expect that Barbados would represent themselves in the very first matchup. So as we round this one up, Martin, I want to say thank you very much from CSA, Commentator Sports Incorporated, to the Trident 10 TV production team for inviting us over. Uh, we'll see you right back here, I believe, then, for the two leg, in fact, the two, ma the two matches between Cuba on the 26th and 28th, which is Sunday, and Tuesday uh, next next week as we will prepare our statistics. Uh, we hope that the viewers have enjoyed what they've seen this evening and, of course, heard from yours truly, Trevor Thorne, and, of course, the ma maestro himself, Keith Grell Griffith. Yes, Trevor, thank you very much. We'll be back here again on Sunday and Tuesday, God willing, on behalf of the entire crew and our, I guess we can call them, executive producers of the Barbados Football Association, this has been the friendly international between Barbados and Jamaica. Final score, Barbados 2, Jamaica 2. Good night from Trident 10. Come out and watch the Jamaican reggae girls strike hard as they enter the final round of the 2018 CONCACAF Caribbean Women's Championship Qualifiers. The reggae girls will open their campaign against the Antiguans on August 25 at 6 p.m. before facing Bermuda on August 27 at 7 p.m. The girls will then take on Trinidad on August 31 at 7 p.m. before ending against Cuba on September 2 at 6 p.m. For more information, visit our JFF Live digital platforms. The girls need your support on the road to France. Let's make the home advantage Vantage count.
It's time for the Jamaican Senior Reggae Boys to make their debut in CONCACAF's newest tournament, the Nations League. The boys will face the Cayman Islands at the office, the National Stadium in Kingston, Jamaica, on Sunday, September 9. Kickoff time, 7 p.m. Save the date because you won't want to miss it. For more information, visit our JFF Live digital pages. Come out to support our reggae boys as they officially begin their journey to Qatar 2022. I see the sun rise up, everything's okay. It's a beautiful day. Feeling so good, I'm glad I'm hydrated. For a day, the water away. One, 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 one buckle, two buckle, three buckle, four. What everybody needs, so I gotta make sure. When I work all day, or I'm with the family, I'm doing what's right for me. I see the sun rise up, everything's okay. It's a beautiful day. Feeling so good, I'm glad I'm hydrated. For a day, the water away. Come out and watch the Jamaican reggae girls strike hard as they enter the final round of the 2018 CONCACAF Caribbean Women's Championship Qualifiers. The reggae girls will open their campaign against the Antiguans on August 25 at 6 p.m. before facing Bermuda on August 27 at 7 p.m. The girls will then take on Trinidad on August 31 at 7 p.m. before ending against Cuba on September 2 at 6 p.m. For more information, visit our JFF Live digital platforms. The girls need your support on the road to France. Let's make the home advantage Advantage count. It's time for the Jamaican Senior Reggae Boys to make their debut in CONCACAF's newest tournament, the Nations League. The boys will face the Cayman Islands at the office, the National Stadium in Kingston, Jamaica, on Sunday, September 9. Kickoff time, 7 p.m. Save the date because you won't want to miss it. For more information, visit our JFF Live digital pages. Come out to support our reggae boys as they officially begin their journey to Qatar 2022. See the sun rise up, everything's okay. It's a beautiful day. Feeling so good, I'm glad I'm hydrated. For a day, the water away. One, 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 one buckle, two buckle, three buckle, four. What everybody needs, so I gotta make sure. When I work all day, or I'm with the family, I'm doing what's right for me. I see the sun rise up, everything's okay. It's a beautiful day. Feeling so good, I'm glad I'm hydrated. For a day, the water away. 